Well, my friends, hello and welcome back to another episode of our C-Sharp Terraria coding series. I am Professor Riptide, and I would like you to address me as such in the comments down below. Without any further ado, let us begin. So this is going to be episode two of our series, and we're going to cover classes, protection levels, vectors, and if statements. Now, I know that might seem like it's pretty fancy terminology, like what is a class or protection level? Well, we're going to go ahead and break it down for you. But before we talk about that, I also want to quickly mention that part three is going to deal with syntax, which is going to be like the grammar of code, which might be something I should have done in the first one or maybe in the second one right now. But we are going to get around to that. So that way you actually know how to format all of these things so that it doesn't give you any errors. So what exactly is a class? Well, classes are kind of like objects and you can give these different objects properties. Like for example, maybe that soccer ball of yours has a property and its property is that it has a red color. Or maybe its property is that it has, you know, like a, a red dot or, or a blue spot over there. Or maybe it's just really big. It has a larger size or a larger scale. And this is exactly what a class is. It's just a kind of object that you can create that you can give specific properties. And each instance of that class is unique. Over here, I've just opened up my gel yo-yo code, which I've uh, recently uploaded a video about. But at the top here, you can see that we're saying public class gel yo-yo mod item. So we're creating a class called gel yo-yo, and it's a public class, meaning let's say if we wanted to reference this item or add it in a recipe in a different file, we could actually do that. And the type of class that this is, so it's a gel yo-yo, and it's the type of mod item. And this allows us to override uh, special defaults or functions and methods within this public class here that have already been defined for this data type, which is so, so awesome. And it allows us to just easily change our things like display name, tooltip, our damage, our damage type, and all of these different attributes of this item. And this is probably the most important takeaway that you can get from this video is that object oriented programming is where you can give attributes to specific instances of an object. And that is what makes it so powerful. So right here, I have made just this quick example of creating an item class. Uh, this is not how you would probably do it in the real world. You probably wouldn't just want to say straight up class, but we're going to talk about that later. But this is essentially what it would look like uh, if you were to make a class. You could just say, oh, OK, let's give it this property of damage and velocity. And that would then give this property to this class. And when we create a new version or a new instance of this item class, we can just say by saying item wooden sword equals new item. And there we go. We've created a new wooden sword of the class item. And we can then modify that item's properties uh, later on down the road. So let's quickly talk about protection levels. So I'm sure you've all seen things like uh, public class, you know, private class. Or maybe you haven't seen private class, but you've definitely seen public class if you've done any Terraria modding. Well, essentially, a public class allows you to access uh, the data within that class outside of the class, and private does not allow access outside of the class. So let's say you were in uh, a namespace, right? And you created a variable within a namespace. Well, you can't access it outside of that namespace because it would be outside of the scope. How are you going to access a variable? Well, you could make it global by putting it outside, but that's uh, an entirely different thing, and you don't always want to do that with your variables. But essentially, a public class uh, allows you to use it outside uh, of the scope that it's been defined in, while private does not allow any access of that outside of the scope it's been defined in. And you could go really far down the rabbit hole into how this works, but that is a little bit advanced for us right now. We will probably get there as time goes on. Uh, this series is going to go advanced at some point. I do want to point that out. We are going to be going uh, more in depth into what some of these things mean as time goes on. So if you are kind of confused and something might seem like a black box to you, that's fine. We're eventually going to go even deeper into it. Uh, and I said the same does go for variables. You can't use a variable from another code file in a, code, in a different code file that's in a different path or directory. That just doesn't work unless you actually grab uh, that file using a using or a directory reference at the top and mark that variable from the other file as a public variable, which is like we said here, allows access outside of the class. Uh, and you will get an error if you don't do that. Now we have if statements. So these are actually pretty basic. It's if something is true or not. And I'm sure hopefully all of you are familiar with an expression in math. An expression returns a value 
So 1 plus 1 equals 2. That's an expression right there. And that would return 2. The code within an if statement is run if the expression returns true. True is typically 1 and false is typically 0. And for some reason I found after doing some research that sometimes negative 1 can also be true. Uh, I don't know in what instances this would be the case, but apparently I'd put that there because I found it uh, online somewhere, but I would have to uh, do some further testing to see if that's actually true or not. But you can do things like uh, if something is greater than this, then do x. And that would be an if statement. And it's actually pretty straightforward to understand. And they are very commonly used logic in code. So you need to get familiar with them probably right about now. And oh my god, an enemy is approaching us. The vicious vector Victoria has appeared. She lurps over to you, math joke, snorting indignantly. My mama Vectorette told me that all my integer friends can be added into me. Even the floats can too. What do you do? Let her compile, crash, and burn, or take out your trusty keyboard and find the problem. Well, as tempting as option A would be, I think we're going to stick with uh, option B. Take out your trusty keyboard and find the problem. So vectors. 2D vectors contain an X and Y coordinate or an X and Y value. They are commonly used in Terraria to store position and velocity. So you can think of it as almost like a point on a coordinate plane. You have the X point and the Y point. And a vector just contains both of those values. And of course, you can access both of them individually if you want to. But remember, you cannot add integers or floats to a vector. You can only add or subtract using another vector. This goes back to the first episode where we said, don't do operations of operands that are not of the same type, because you're going to get a lot of problems if you try and do that. However, vectors can be multiplied by integers or divided by integers as well. I would like to call this scalar multiplication or scalar multiplication because we're just straight up scaling the vector uh, by a whole integer value. So you can do that if you want to. But remember, do not multiply it by a float because that is not going to work either. Here's an example of using a vector. We're going to create one called position and we're going to give it a value of 0 for the x and 0 for the y. And if we are pressing the right key, we're going to add 2 to our position dot x. And if this is linked to the position of our player, it will hopefully move our player uh, 2 pixels to the right. Victoria begins to calm down as you explain what she did wrong. Oh, I get it now. Thanks. You know, I have a few cousins that could use some advice. If you see them, tell them I said hi. Victoria fades away into ones and zeros, leaving you standing alone. You forgot to tell her she probably shouldn't be listening to her mama Victorette's programming advice anytime soon. And that is it for uh, this very short little episode here. Uh, I tried to do something a little bit fun there. Hopefully that wasn't too annoying. Thank you to all of the lovely patrons, and if you want to become a patron yourself, you get early access to my game Earthward, which by the way, I'm currently trying to uh, get an animated trailer funded for the game, so that way I can create a proper Kickstarter page and see if I can uh, take that game off and, you know, fund the time that's going to take to develop it. So if you guys want to do that, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, but regardless, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.